Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Today's episode is a solo episode. You get just me. It's going to be short and sweet. And we're going to talk about strategies for optimizing better digestion during the holidays. And frankly, these are strategies you probably should be utilizing every day. But, um, you know, as the holiday season comes upon us, we start to get ourselves into situations where we have less control over what we're eating, when we're eating, how we're eating, all the things. And so I think it's always nice at this time of year to kind of remind ourselves of some of the things that we can do to support better digestion so that we don't end up at some point, either back at square one from where we started, you know, however many months ago when we might have addressed our digestion, or maybe in a new situation where we're feeling like we've lost control. So here we go. And your suggestion number one today is going to be pick a team, high carb or high fat. Look, we all know that when it comes to diet, um, in your day-to-day -day diet, you generally have to pick a team. You are either higher on the carbs and a bit lower on the fats, or you're on a higher fat diet. Actually, if you're gonna go high fat, I strongly recommend you adopt a ketogenic diet because the people that I see who really kind of get into trouble with high fat diets are people that are in, on a high fat diet, but they're not actually ketogenic. And that's where people get into massive trouble because when you have high fat and you have too many carbs around, you can't get into ketosis and you start to pack on the extra pounds. Now, if you're a bodybuilder, I don't know, maybe that can work for you. I don't even think they do it, to be perfectly honest. I think they just lean into protein and maybe add in some carbs strategically. But for the rest of us mere mortals, we need to pick a team. And that doesn't mean that you are low fat, because we know that we need some healthy fat, but we want to keep our fat percentage, let's say, I'm going to say around 20% of total calories, or maybe even little less, if you're going to be on a higher carb diet. Now, if you're on a higher carb diet, you want to make sure, of course, that the carbs that you're getting are high quality. You want to aim for those complex carbs, especially vegetables, so that we avoid the simple carbs like the, you know, the breads. And I mean, this is obvious stuff. You guys have been listening to my podcast long enough to know you want to stay away from the junk. I tend to revert typically towards a more paleolithic diet where I'm eating you know, most vegetables, I eat my good quantity of protein, I eat my healthy fats, and I will stray every once in a while, especially ever since I did the work with Joel Green. Uh, with the whey, I will eat strategically, I'll eat some grains every once in a while that are properly sprouted and soaked. I might eat some beans and legumes at times, but these aren't gonna agree with everybody. So you obviously have to make your own decisions. But what I will say, is pick a team. Are you going high fat? Or are you going high carb? Okay. So just keep that in mind. And you can even apply that to, let's say holiday dinners. Let's say it's Thanksgiving. It's a little bit harder on those nights, but if you're able to, I would say go with either the high fat items on the table and stay away from those high carbs or go with the high carb stuff and stay away from the fat. The bad news is that very often the same dish will have both in there. So you're going to have to figure that one out. Maybe just have a tiny bit of the mashed potatoes that are so delicious, mashed with the butter and the cream and whatever else. Or if you can convince your host, or if you can, um, if you're making your own dinner, instead of having mashed potatoes, another really cool strategy that I've used that goes over really well in my family is I'd make a cauliflower and turnip mash. So I steam a bunch of cauliflower, I throw in and steam a few turnips, not very many, not even maybe a third or a quarter is turnip. And then I'll throw in also, I'll steam a couple of potatoes. And when you mash that up together, it's this beautiful fluffy mash. You can use uh, whatever you want for, you can use a bit of butter with it or whatever it is when you're mashing it up. And um, you end up with a very satisfying mash that is way lower carb and frankly, way easier to digest. It's going to sit in your system and not make you feel comatose. So that's my suggestion. That's number one. Number two is, some of you are going to roll your eyes at this one, but I see this all the time. 
make sure that you try to avoid excess stress when you're eating. Is that, should that really be number two? Yeah, because you know what? When you're stressed and you're eating, number one, you end up eating things you don't want to eat. Number two, your digestion literally starts to shut down. If your body thinks you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, whatever that, whoever that tiger may look like, um, your digestive juices literally stop flowing and you can be almost guaranteed that you're going to feel hideous after that meal. So whatever you can do to manage your way out of stress. And we know that these days there's lots of, especially when we were big family gatherings with people we're not used to being with, people have a lot of differing opinions on different things these days. So whatever we can do to avoid those topics or practice deep breathing so that we don't rise to the bait would be really well positioned. And so doing whatever you can to avoid stressful situations while you're eating is going to be really important because what you want to be when you're eating is in a parasympathetic state. That's a rest and digest state. So you want to be able to give your body the time and the bandwidth to digest your food so that you will feel better. Okay. What's number three? Number three will be for today, we're going to talk about drinking too much while you're eating. Hmm. Really not? What do you mean? I mean, here's the thing. Think about the chemistry of all this, right? When you're eating food, you need your digestive enzymes in your gut to be breaking down that food. If you're drinking copious amounts of whatever it is, whether it's wine, whether it's water, like whatever you're drinking, the more fluids you're taking on, the more you're going to dilute those digestive juices. You do not want to do that particularly. So taking a little sip of something here and there is fine, but I would minimize the drinking while you're eating, especially. If you find that you feel heavy after meals, my next suggestion, number four, is going to be to tap into digestive enzymes. I'm a huge fan of digestive enzymes. The brand that I really like is called Masszymes because it's a really full spectrum formula of digestive enzymes. And I find that taking, I depending on the size of my meal, I'll take anywhere from three to four at the beginning of the meal. And I find that it makes a huge difference in helping my body to break down the food. We naturally make fewer enzymes, digestive enzymes as we age. And so for many of us over the age of 40 or 45, if you haven't been using digestive enzymes with your meals, you may find that if you start now, you will really feel a difference in how you feel after those meals, especially larger meals. So especially during the holiday season when you're sometimes sitting down to a meal that is two or three times the normal size of what you're used to eating, those, a good digestive enzyme formula that is full spectrum will go a long way to helping you to break down those foods and feel better at the end of the meal. The other thing that's going to really help you feel better at the end of the meal is going to be having a walk. So if you can find it in yourself to get out the door and walk for 15 or 20 minutes, especially after large meals, but really after any meal, you will notice that your digestion will be better. Now, I'm not talking about a power walk here because that can be a bit nauseating. I would say a stroll, a good old fashioned stroll after, especially after your bigger meals is going to go a really long way to helping you to feel better and to digest your food better. Now, I jump to after meals. Another thing that we can do before a meal, and this is for those of us, if you're, if you picked the higher carb route and you want to help to support your better blood sugar, then you're going to want to tap into one of a few different strategies that can help to keep that blood sugar response lower. So one of the simplest, cheapest things to do is to have a little bit of apple cider vinegar in a bit of water a few minutes before you eat. That very often can be super helpful in keeping that blood sugar steadier. It still go up, but it may help it to stay steadier and avoid those big spikes in blood sugar. Now, big spikes in blood sugar we know are extremely damaging to our bodies. So whatever we can do to avoid the giant spikes and keep things a little bit closer down to the line is really going to benefit us in a million different ways. Um, another thing we can do to manage blood sugar, which is kind of part of digestion, I guess, is make sure that you're 
exercising because when we exercise, particularly those big muscle groups, that helps with our insulin sensitivity. It helps to give our bodies a place to store that excess sugar, and that will naturally help our glycemic response. Obviously, eating lower glycemic meals, foods that meals that are not composed of foods that are very high on the glycemic scale is going to make a massive difference. So, and I will say that sometimes those foods are not the same for every, all the people. For me, one of the foods that makes my blood sugar go absolutely crazy high is rice. And I know, I know, listen, rice is not an evil food. Uh, there's a lot of good things about rice, especially rice that's been cooked and cooled. And so we get that resistant starch, which is great for supporting the microbiome, which ultimately will be great for digestion. But as it turns out for me, rice sends my blood sugar to the moon. And I've learned this by wearing a continuous glucose monitor. So while wearing a continuous glucose monitor is not actually going to help your digestion so much, what it is going to help is it's going to help you to understand how you respond to different foods. So if you have it in you, and maybe not so much right at the holidays, but even before the holiday days, to get some insight into how your body responds to different foods, you may want to consider getting your hands on a continuous glucose monitor. That's the kind that just st stays in your arm. You can get it from a company like uh, Levels has really good CGMs um, and a good service to support you along with it. Uh, really nice, really nice app interface. Um, and getting that insight on how your body responds to different foods can really give you some really great guidelines on which foods to avoid, or even different food combinations that might help to, to reduce that blood sugar response. Now, one of the things I want to um, suggest that you look out for, a lot of people will say that if you have carbs with protein or with uh, enough fat, now we talked about that, right? So they will say that that will dampen the, the blood sugar response of the food. Turns out that that's not always the case. Sometimes all that does is it delays the blood sugar spike. The only way to really know that for yourself is to wear that CGM, check your blood sugar half an hour after you've eaten, an hour after you've eaten, 40, you know, an hour and a half after you've eaten. Sometimes you may get a bit of a shock to see that, that that blood sugar spike, it still happens. It just happens later. So keep an eye on that. And that will, although it won't, it's not, like I said, it's not something that's necessarily going to help your digestion, but it's definitely something that's going to support you in your goals. All right. We talked about post-meal movement. We did the digestive enzymes. We're talking about managing stress. Um, pick a team, high carb or high fat, chew your food, excess fluids. Okay. That's, those are basically the basic tips, uh, that can, you know, there's the, those are the real core tips that can really help with digestion. Um, what if you need some help with gut health? Is there a peptide that can help with digestion? I get asked a lot, right? What's the peptide for ABC, whatever the case may be. So I would say that on the longer chain peptides, there's not so much a peptide that helps with digestion, but there's definitely peptides that can be super helpful for supporting a healthy gut, right? So we know that BPC-157, body protective compound 157, is a really powerful peptide for helping to keep the gut lining and the GI tract healthy. And it turns out that you can use BPC-157 very effectively orally to do this. And one of the companies that um, makes one of the best formulas in this realm is Level Up Health. Um, they have an ultimate GI repair that combines a lot of different those different peptides, BPC-157, KPV, um, what else is in there, lorazotide, even GHK, with a lot of other supportive elements like glutamine, zinc carnosine, uh, what else is in there? Tributyrate. Like it's, it's kind of like the big, amazing formula to support gut health. Um, sorry, Matthew, I just drew a blank there. So that, that's where kind of peptides can come in when it comes to digestion. 
One other aspect of peptides that might be helpful for digestion, but it's not going to be so much in an acute way, but maybe you could do a cycle of a couple of the bioregulators that support the digestive organs. So we have in the bioregulator world, we have a, a bioregulator for the stomach, we have bioregulators for the pancreas, um, and we have a bioregulator for the liver. And those three bioregulators, let's say, I've seen people sometimes do a 30-day cycle of that stack of three can actually help to support better function of the liver, of the stomach, which is might even help with secreting better digestive enzymes or better, more appropriate quantities of digestive enzymes, and the pancreas, of course, in helping to control blood sugar. So these bioregulators, the one thing I do want to say is they're not... It's not like a supplement where you're going to take it and you're going to notice an immediate change, but they can very often help to support the function of these organs over the long haul. And sometimes creating that stack, applying it for 30 days can be really helpful for people. So that's pretty much um, our little quick hit on digestive support as we move into the festive season <laughs> when um, our digestion really does take a hit because we're eating foods that we're not accustomed to eating and in combinations that we definitely don't um, aren't so accustomed to as well. Um, I will say that in terms of looking ahead to the holiday season, and using some of those strategies that hopefully you've developed over the course of the year to manage the damage as it were, well-timed intermittent fasts can be really powerful, particularly after a night of excess. If you can get up the next morning, lean into hydration, uh, maybe some green tea, and really try to delay that first meal, it can go a long way to just kind of helping to even things out from the night before. Um, another thing you can do before a big meal that you know you're heading into, you can take a page out of Joel Green's book, The Way, and um, have one of the preload meals that he talks about. One of my favorite and the one that always sticks out in my mind is the whey protein shake with a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Trust me, you won't taste it. And it's actually really delicious. And then he puts in a fair amount of cinnamon. Like I think it's about a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of cinnamon in that whey protein shake. You down that about an hour before your meal. Number one, it's going to make you a lot less hungry. So you might not, you know, you'll have better control over your food choices, let's say. And then number two is that it kind of sets you up for success in terms of how you process the food. So Joel is full of these incredible strategies. So if you haven't looked at his work yet, check out the podcast I recorded with him. I think I released it. It was either in September or maybe earlier in October of this year. And we, we talk in that episode about his new book called The Way, which is a great book filled with all these amazing tips and strategies. Okay, guys, I'm going to uh, leave it at that for this episode. And uh, hopefully you picked up a couple of cool tips for digestion. If you have any tips of your own that are your favorites, make sure that you share them in the notes or in the comments. And um, that's about it. So I'm going to wish you a really great November and we'll chat again soon.